Welcome back to another episode of the Afters Hotline. How are we feeling? <laughs> feeling I know good. Where we're going from a there. lot better than last time we were on you. Yeah, we're a bit Ooh. sick, weren't we? Yeah. Very <clears throat> under the weather. I'm on the upper. Finally. Yeah, not. I'm still not 100% fucking getting it. I'm just about back. I reckon if you... <laughs> Low hard enough, short and full <laughs> but, but absolute warrior and a soldier. Like. <laughs> oh my god! I like pushing through. That's one thing I say for myself. What you're a warrior? A warrior and a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> as are. tough as they come, mate. <coughs> Delulu, the hardest geezer. Has, shout po- out the hardest has geezer. posters of me on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out the hardest geezer. <laughs> Is that where we're at? <laughs> Already fucking, that's where we're at with the chat. <laughs> All right, so we have a few questions, or a question. We've got one question, and not this is from Anonymous. 32 seconds, I'm going to be rambling on here. Curious to see who this is. Hey, lads. I've actually got, like, a three-part question. Oh. Uh, the first part is, what do you reckon are the three top clubs or venues are in Sydney at the moment? Because... I don't know, I feel like it's pretty dead. Um, second part is, what do you reckon is the best club or venue um, someone should go to when they first turn 18? So, like, they're for their first club. And the third part is, what was uh, the first club that you went to when you turned 18? Ooh, Jeez. Right. Some good questions. Do you know who that is? Yeah. It's a good question. Well, first club that we went to was home. Uh, mine was... Fucking pontoon. Mine was oh, home as well. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it was grim. My brother took me in with a fakey <laughs> classic. I never yeah. had a fakie. First night out. Uh, yeah, we went to Darling Harbour and we went out and it was like that cl- classic like commercial <laughs> kind of night. It was all wanked. Yeah, mine was pontoon. The first night didn't actually get in there. I was re- the second obviously didn't like me. I was wearing a pair of superstars and he's like, no, added us shoes. And then, like, because you can see what? and look in, everyone's wearing out of that shoes, so he didn't like me. But, yeah. Why is that? You're I, probably too pissed. I wouldn't. No, but he would have said, like, you're too drunk. Mm. And I wasn't too pissed at all. It was just. That wouldn't be like you'd get too pissed and start carrying <laughs> on, would it? <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I was home, but I can't remember. How old I was. It wouldn't have been pontoon. I remember pontoon was later. Fuck, where else is Home there? used to be... They, they, they don't do that anymore, do they? The homemade Saturdays. Yeah. Do they they yeah. do? Yeah, it's still a thing. What was that... They, um, they used to go... Like, that was a mad night out when you yeah. ate What was that joint? You, it was, wasn't a very good club as such, but you'd go there for like, pre-drinks and uh, it was so cheap. Starbar. Starbar. Five, was it? I don't think I ever went there, eh? It was uh, $5 mm. like vodka Red Bulls or or vodka raspberries and mm. stuff and then $8 jugs or something. Fuck. Scary Canary? Oh. Thank, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> step foot in there once. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think I've been in there once. Um, best club in Sydney. Best club? No, he said Wait. best three venues in Sydney. Yep. I'm going to go first. Selena's. Selena's. Selena's first. Selena's first. Carousel our, our home. Carousel second. I'm not ranking. I'm just saying three in general. Oh, just right. three in general. My three Selena's, favorite. Carousel, and third. Hmm. Ivy, but I haven't. I've not been to Universal. I've heard Universal's, Universal's good. Yeah, we've, we've been there a few times. Oh, Universal's good. Greenwood. I love Greenwood. Yeah, I think. There's Greenwood. probably. I th- I think they're having sound problems at the minute. I prefer yeah. I'd prefer but the Ivan the Greenwood though. I <laughs> particularly I, it's like say if you know, we hadn't been there a lot in the last year, going to lots of events and whatever, and above. If you said Ivy or Greenwood a year ago, you'd say Ivy hands down. But, but it's just because we've been there so many times I, now. Ivy as like an actual club itself is very cool. Like obviously the production's probably as good as it gets. But a day sesh at Greenwood, like when Sash used to be at Greenwood and stuff, mm. and like that do not sleep event, like. Mm. Dennis Salter as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Greenwood for an actual day session. Is yeah, I do. I agree with that. Is as elite as it comes. So you mm. reckon Greenwood over Ivy? Well, it, like I'm not saying oh, it's a better club. It's just I enjoy like a day session. Yeah, it's yeah. Personal. Well, yeah. No, no. I'm just saying because he's asking for three, your three best. So I'm just saying like what's better. It's hard to say, like define best. Like you're gonna if you're gonna go best, you'd probably say the Ivy because it's got all the bells and whistles, but. 
Well, well, I guess, I don't know, three favourite, I suppose, is a better way to put it. I don't three favourite. Three favourite. Selena's, obviously. S- Selena's, Carousel, Greenwood. Greenwood. Yeah. Yeah, I could, what else is there? There is right, there's a problem with venues. Yeah. I I quite I don't mind Oxford Art when it's like when it's set up yeah prop, like correctly like how um how Sash used to lay Sh- it out. It sounds pretty good in there as well. Sounds good in there. Home, yeah. home when Sash is there on a long weekend. Maggots. And then what was the last one? Oh, if you're just turning eighteen, best place to go. I have to be somewhere cheap. Flinders. One for the uni <laughs> students. Flinders used to be mad. I used to love Flinders when I was 18, 19, 20. Flinders. And they had the upstairs. Oh, you've never seen it, did you? If we're, ta- we, we're talking purely from a rave point of view, like. I think we should talk within House and Techno if you're yeah. 18. Um, basement. Yeah. Like if I'm eight, if I'm fresh 18, mm. that fresh seems 18 to be like a younger crowd that go there. Just, want just like heavy, <coughs> intense. But, but it's also like. On the other scale, I would also go back to saying Carousel. Like, it depends on the music you're interested in. Did he ask venues? Good question. To go to? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he didn't if say you, event. If you just, yeah. No, it was venues. Venues yeah. slash club. To go to when you turn 18? Yeah. yeah. I would I would say, I'll, I'll go back to Carousel. If you want like a really good club, I would say Carousel. But it, again, it depends on what music and stuff you're interested in. You also got to, th- yeah. I was going to think more along like, Drinks prices and all that kind of shit, like deals. If you're just yeah, that is the you know, effect of that in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's a million ways to skin this question. Mm. I go carousel. Not really. Probably Flinders. Flinders, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's small, it's intimate. It's pretty. I like, can get pretty loose in there. Although it is mostly hard techno <laughs> there now, but it comes back to what music you're you're interested. in. Yeah, like that's yeah, that's tough. Mm. Depends what you're into But yeah I think Flinders is cool Well when we used to go When we were younger It was cool because It was Like small Intimate club It got pretty loose in there It was, yeah. it was all like People around your age It was where everyone Had their first gig yeah. yeah I think it's probably A lot of people's first Clubbing experience Is Flinders Yeah, yeah. but now Like I said Basement Like I feel like Basement's where All the 18 19 year olds go This is from Laura Big up Laura Big up the hey. Laura Hey Big up the Laws dog how did each of you come up with your DJ names? Hey. 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 We'll start How with did you pick yours? <laughs> so. You boring cunt. <laughs> it's a really long story, but it happened to be my last name, so. Fucking hell. That's, cra- know, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking <laughs> wild. How did you. <laughs> Let's be creative genius. Hey, you know, the, the juices are flowing. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get yours, Dark Horse? Um... <laughs> Like I used to I used to go by Flamingo Like a few years ago As I'm constantly reminded mm. By you two mm-hmm. Wonder why. those days Yeah um, And then I decided it was time for a change About A year and a half ago Why was it time for a change? Enlighten people Rebrand, start fresh New perspective Things were changing at the time So I thought oh. I'm going to take a new Take a fresh start <laughs> Yep. And yeah, music taste changed and that kind of thing. So how'd you get to Dark Horse? Um when I was in high school a couple of my mates used to call me Dark Horse. Why is that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually I don't can't give you like a specific example. But I don't know, they just started saying it. And then it went away for a few years. It wasn't mentioned and then I was trying to come up with a new name and one day it popped in my head Dark Horse and I was like, Oh works. Works. Mm-hmm. All capital letters, right? Eh? Yeah, all capitals. So you're yeah, yelling at people? Yeah, yelling. Why the capital letters? I just felt like it looked better. Commanding. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like it looked better. But yeah, when I was trying to think of names, I thought Dark Horse might look better on a flyer than some of the other. I can't remember what, I, what else I was considering, but I thought like if I put that up in a flyer of like a <laughs> knock-up festival or whatever, it looks like it where, fits. <coughs> where, did I, where did I say you're here? It was... People are like starting their name with like triple A, so they're always oh, top of the first really? of the bill. Yeah, where did I see that? I used to do that on Snapchat, like renaming people on Snapchat. Mm. But all the birds, <laughs> <laughs> or lack of. Where'd you get Melton? Yeah. Um, 
What did I used to go by? Brody T. Brody T. Bring him back. Brody T had a good ring to it. Mm. Anyway, how do you get beaches? I don't know. I was. <coughs> you mean actually, you don't know? No, I do know. That's a lie. It's a fucking obvious story. We, <laughs> we were going out. Oh no! So Sean used to be Sean used to do data entry. Oh, um, horrible. Yeah, and then one night we were going out, and like I was at work, and I think Will might have said, um, "Oh, what's doing? Like, what time are we going out?" And then Sean said, "We're just waiting for Melton to finish." I was like, who the fuck's Melton? And he's like, it's you, cunt. I was like, why? <laughs> he's like, because if you told me your name it was Melton, then... It just fits. Wouldn't think twice. I was like, where'd you get Melton from? And he said... It was it's from- a suburb in Victoria. I don't think a very nice suburb. But I could be wrong. Don't come at me, Victoria, and if it is nice. Yeah. There's a street <laughs> called Melton Street on the M2. We'll have to nick it. M5, maybe. Or, actually, sorry, Put M5 or M7. You know, like the bridges that go across and it shows you what street it is? Nelson Street. Hey. Hey. There you go. Hey, he's made a mark on the on the scene that he's got his <laughs> Out west, I love you. Ah. Enough shit talk into the episode now with Luke Dean. Let us know what you think in the comments. We'll be back in two weeks with another special guest. To be revealed. Enjoy. Welcome back for another episode of The Beat. Today we're joined by one of the UK's hottest rising stars at the minute, Luke Dean. What's happening, mate? All good, all good, how are we? Yeah, good. It's a bit full circle today because it was about a year ago that we recorded with George Smedals and that was when he sort of first brought you to our attention and now you're on your first Aussie tour. Up the smells. Oh, it's mad. I remember seeing the video and thought, who, who are these guys? Yeah. And then done a little delve in. <laughs> but yeah, big up Smedals. Um, obviously, lovely message from what he said on the pod. But yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> oh, 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 fuck oh. It. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Oh, it's connected to the Bluetooth. That's Leave right. that in. That's good. Leave <laughs> that in. Very unprofessional. Not now, Jack. So I just keep talking. Sorry. So how are you feeling today? Big one in Melbourne last night out here. Yep. Uh, late one in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. But feeling fresh, ready to go. Buzzing for it. Been here. Well, I don't even know how long I've been here. Yeah. Oh, so two weeks just, now. So last weekend of your tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But buzzing. Can't wait. Mm. What's been the highlight so far? It's got to be the boat party. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to be the boat party. Yeah, that was for those fun. that don't know, we uh, we sent it. We had fun. <laughs> we had fun. Yeah, go, going home to the airport, we were fucked because we went straight from the boat. For anyone listening, and then we obviously had a few of the all the shots we had. The um, Jager bombs. Jager bombs. We had about five <laughs> of them. Getting on that plane was tough. But yeah. So pissed getting on that flight. That was a very good weekend, but it was a very fun well, weekend. When we come off there, we was we was trying to book an Uber back to the hotel, and like for some reason, like five cancelled on us. So we were sat in his oh. bus stop for like a good half hour, just finished, like mangled. Fuck. And then finally come, got back, and I checked, and I thought, oh, it's gonna be late in here. It was like four p.m. I was like, <laughs> oh. Luke, spend the three to three Luke days. Luke did bed. almost miss the boat as well with your oh, USB. I did. Classic. Yep. Classic, lost every USB you, I own. You didn't end up finding them, did you? Well, obviously, I've got a UK SIM, so I've been trying to phone the hotel. Oh, true. Mm. And oh, yeah. my limit is saying I can't do it. <sighs> you probably left them in a club in uh, Maruchidor. No, so, I've, so do you remember when I went to check out the hotel yeah. and I didn't have the keys? Yeah. So I literally had like a, a flashback of I put the USB, because I have my earplugs yeah. in like a case with my USB. Right. So I put them like Nick on the table to leave with the keys, and obviously so we walked out, hotel. and my brain's gone. Oh, I've left the keys in there, but we can't get back in because we've not got the keys. And then uh, gone down because obviously my brain's just focusing on these keys. So I've gone down and said, "Oh, we don't have the keys." Checking out, left Fuck. four three hours away. So they're in the hotel. Probably not anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> we yeah, can outsmarted yourself. Yeah. Anyone wants all of my yeah, tracks? Fuck. Just go to. Um, yeah, one lucky claim. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't say that. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll that we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Melbourne, you were down there. You seen Aussie Govan and Parker down there yesterday? Yes, we were there yesterday. We had a lot of fun. Went to went for a few drinks and then obviously went to their show. Smashed it, which was standard, standard yeah, for them. Yeah, expect nothing else. Um, and then yeah, obviously went from there to my show at one six one. Had a lot of fun there. It was really cool. Um, Remember it all. Last night? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Blurry. Blurry. <laughs> Blurry. 
But yeah, and then obviously now we're here. So you're boys with Ozzy from back home, hey? Yeah, so obviously, so Oz, how did I first meet Oz? Well, obviously he's on the same agency as me. Yeah. Um, and then just sort of the UK just knocking about, like, and then you meet certain people, obviously met Oz, and obviously he's one of our brothers now. Yeah, he's Makes released like, on oh, um, Next Up as well, hasn't he? Yes, he's released on Next Up. Mate, his music is just, yeah. just quality. We, like, we were chatting the other week saying, which artist do you think like, you play the most tracks of? And I was saying, I think probably Ozzy's number one. Yeah. For me. Mate, do you know what? It's a standard, like, joke. Like, because obviously we play a lot of shows together. Yeah. And before every show, it's the same thing. It's like, fuck, what am I going to play? Ozzy. Like, because he, <laughs> yeah, he, he goes, shoes. oh, I can't play any of yours. And I'm like, I can't play any of yours. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, Ozzy's, Ozzy's my guy, man. Yeah, he's had a few big tunes recently. Yeah, just you from, wait. Just you uh, wait. Fucking, he just sent me some new bits. Yeah. Oh, like, playing anything tonight? Play some tonight, surely. We'll have to Absolutely. find out. We'll have to find <laughs> out. See you at Switch. So <laughs> you told us last week, so you're only 21, that's right? 21, And yeah. you've been producing for 10 years? Yeah, around. Can around you tell us years. a bit like how you got into it at such a young age and what that's been like. Yeah, so so obviously for those that don't know or they do know, Max, my cousin, um, his neighbour used to be like involved in like music quite heavily. I don't know if it was house music. I think it was just dance music. Yeah, just like, but I think it was over in Miami. I can't quite remember. And he went over to Max's and like showed him. Fruity Loops, what we produce on. And uh, I remember uh, briefly, like so long ago, Max come around and was like, oh, I've got this new thing. And I was like, because we've always like been interested in music, like playing like piano or guitar when we was younger. And then uh, yeah, he come around and he was like, well, I've got this thing. So I was like, all right, cool. Went online, had the demo version for free. And then for about six years, just made like sounds. Like it wasn't even music, it was just like just nonsense. And then yeah, just gradually to be fair, one thing I'll say is I've never actually been taught. Like it's I've not even not even YouTube, like Wow. Generally I've Fuck. it was more just like completely f- not failing but like just trial and error. Yeah. Until like stuff started working and then I just follow that. So just self taught. Yeah, so up until now it's just been like like I'll I'll be honest, in terms of technicality, I'm not technical at all. Like I just do what I've done for years. And it sort of just it's works. Working. Yeah, so just it's so sometimes it's the most simple things obviously that yeah. get the chart toppers as you're well aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just works. In the lobby. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, no, so it was just pretty much just trial and error for a f- nice while. Yeah. Is it always house that you into as well? Well, so I used to make like <coughs> not properly, but back in the day I used to make like uh, rap instrumentals, like really? drill beats and all that. Have you still got them on your USB or anything? Or on the I've got some on my phone. Oh, okay, <laughs> um, them but like I used to go with one of my good friends. Like I, the f- the thing is, I I wasn't really heavily listening to stuff like that. But like, I still listen to like you obviously your little baby, your Drake and all that stuff here and there. But, like, I've just enjoyed making it. And then... But I've always made house music, like, since the start. And then just gradually, sort of, obviously, as it does, your sounds just... Yeah, you find your find Yeah, your just way. change, and then now we're here. When did you really start to see the success with your tracks? Um, I think... Um, so it would have been, I can't remember the date, but it was around, I think it was about two, three years ago, I made a track called Sounding a Bit 90s, yeah. which was on, on George's label yeah. on yeah. South. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'd made that the year before. I'm not too sure the so date. Like 17 when you're making that? I think, yeah, about 17, 18. <sighs> it's not fair, Still in school it? then? Nah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, uh, I made that, and then I remember sending it to Max, and Max was like, he was like, this is actually good and I was like what do you mean he was like, like no offence but this is like this is actually playable like this is good so I was like okay cool and obviously at that time I'd I'd just joined Locus not like fully but um, obviously Ross my manager yeah. um, said like listen I, I, I want to start helping you out and stuff so then we sort of just sent it out to a few people and then out of nowhere it just started getting like obviously they was playing it out and people were just gelling with it and then I start, I was just sitting there like seeing videos of them playing it out. That's like, sick. Whoa, like sick. And then uh 
and then yeah, from there it's just been I've a bit of a. Uh, so so just, I, I was gonna say, so it's been pretty quick in terms of like it's been only a few yeah, years. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's not been like, yeah. It, it, I suppose it's been gradual, but not like maybe as gradual as I would have wanted it to be. Yeah. It's definitely... You've been grafting for a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you're you're rising, course, rising but quick it, it sort of definitely thing. came to a point of like, whoa, geez, this is no, quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's, it like, what's it like having Max? Like, obviously, oh. you're very close with him. He's absolutely popping off now. What's it like having him to just bounce ideas off and just chat it, to all the time? Personally, like, without him, I definitely wouldn't be in the position I'm in. Obviously, opportunity-wise, he's he's given me loads of opportunities. But just in in terms of like knowledge and just just different ways of thinking about certain things, like the guy is just the best geezer. Like I'm not just saying that cause <laughs> my cousin, yeah. you know what I mean, family yeah. aside, like just as a person, he he is just the G. Absolutely, like he he just all he cares about is helping everyone around him, and then at the same time. He's still just absolutely killing yeah, it. Yeah, he's Passionate. fucking, he's right up there. And even like was at Creamfield, he's playing at the main stage. Yeah, he's got the main stage. Like, yeah, how's yeah, he feeling about that one? Oh, I think he's buzzing, he's buzzing. Yeah, I haven't really spoke to him too much because he's been uh, over in Miami. Times, I understand. But, um, yeah, he's buzzing. Yeah. Speaking of you and Max, you just played two warehouse projects, sold out shows together. We did, we did. That what was crazy. Was that like? yeah. Sold out the whole tour. Ooh. Yeah, whole tour. Do, crazy. do you know what? We, we was like, whoa. Like obviously we did, we did you expect that? The oh seller? no! Like we we was hoping for the sellout, of course. But in terms of like how quick, quick. it sold out, like we were sat there and was like, "What is going on? Like, this is mental." Yeah, it's fucking. And then, uh, but to do it twice, like when we sold out the first time, we was like, "Okay, this is this is sick." And then the second time, I just looked at Max and was like, "What's going on?" Like, I suppose it's mad because, like, for us sitting here seeing the shows being announced and stuff all the way other side of the world, and we're looking at that going, like, "Yeah, they're they're gonna crush that." But I suppose like interesting to hear that you guys weren't sort of sure how it was gonna be received as well in terms of yeah, cool. So obviously, listen, we've got a a sick team around us, so so we always have felt in good (coughs) hands in terms of like like not even selling tickets just as a whole with with the brand, but. yeah, to to sell warehouse project out. That was the first time I'd ever been there as well. So it was Not like a bad way to do it. Yeah, it was, and the funniest thing is, obviously, when we played the first show, and it finished. We was like, oh, it's done, and then we was like, we got another one. <laughs> <laughs> but the week after was a difficult one. Yeah, had yeah. a big one. Well, obviously, we had the f- we played fabric in the day. Oh, um, so I think it was the Friday. Was it was it the Friday? I don't even know, but it was obviously we had the warehouse project, then fabric the next day. But the fabric was a day party. Um, Tough backing up. So yeah, we literally me and Max played till four a.m. <sighs> and then we jumped off the decks and we had a like a not a party bus. It was just like a mini coach, but you could call it a party yeah. bus. Did you get any sleep? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do, Silly well, question. It, it, I wanted question. to, but it's <laughs> hard out getting sleep on a bus with 20 people yeah. that have just come out of a party. Yeah. Out of a raid. Um, kick on. So literally, we went straight from Warehouse Project on the bus, but we didn't get to London till about half 11, because <laughs> the bus driver, <laughs> for some reason, had to stop every hour for half hour. And we, hour? What? Half hour. Well, I might be exaggerating Except- that, it might, but it was... Very off and he was following the rules. And we was like, mate, you're like, You're no right. one wants to get out. Are, yeah. you, are you okay? And he was like, oh, it's procedure. So mm. we it took us like six, seven hours to get back. That must uh, be an English thing because like, obviously... It's two hours here, isn't it? I thought it was more. Nah, two hours well, here. We've never... We've had like stuff like that before and we've never had them... Yeah, it must be the new Bro, just being safe. <laughs> yeah. Fair he was just looking after us. He but, got you there in one piece. But uh, yeah, so obviously we... It started at 2 p.m. So we got there at 11.30. So it was like a... Get ready, shower, and club. Fuck. Although they, all, everyone was, I was in trouble a bit because I went back to the hotel and slept. Oh. Uh, so I, I turned enough. up a bit late, but it's got to be done. It happens. What What was it like playing in Warehouse Project? It's it it, it it's sort of it's it's mental because because of obviously the size of the uh, the place and the amount of people. Sometimes it's not hard to connect, but obviously mm. with the bigger venues, you, you can feel a bit distant. Disconnected, yeah. Especially with, it is quite a fair distance, but you feel so connected in there with the crowd. Like It, it felt like you was just playing like an intimate club. Yeah. Um, obviously, we uh, we played the Archive, which is, I think, it's the smallest room. It looked fucking mad. <laughs> oh, it's still, the smallest oh, room. <laughs> it's still huge, What's the, but you know what I think it was, I think, 
I might be wrong. I think it was two k. <laughs> that's that's small. small. I could I could be wrong. I, I I'm terrible with all the stuff like that. Yeah, I just the fact just yeah yeah, yeah yeah. I'm just I turn up and just play like <laughs> I, that's my job. But um the vibe. But in yeah, the vibe was sick. Um, in fact, funny enough, me and Oz, we we was stood backstage and we was like, this, sod this. <laughs> so we went right round the back and just went through the middle and like oh, was yeah. right in the middle. So it's quite rare. Not that we do that. It's just like it's just yeah, just not a joke. We, we just thought, oh, this, this, we had the best time ever. Like it was it was lovely going into the crowd and actually seeing like mm. obviously I see all these boys play yeah. all the time because they're like my best mates. But it was nice seeing it from the other side and like actually being a part of that. It was sick. Did you get recognised a fair bit in the crowd? 100%. Do you know what? A lot of people, I, th- I think they don't expect yeah. you to just be lingering in the crowd, which I think is weird. I, 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 from now, I just love doing it. Getting in amongst But like, a lot of people, like Ozzy was laughing because they, they turned to... Because me and Ozzy were walking through and they were just like... Is that, is that, you look like Ozzy Governor. <laughs> <Luke." Yeah, you laughs> we, like, we get it all the time. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was, it was sick. The rest of the tour sold out as well, as bro, you just mentioned. What are those shows like? Yes, so we've got the last show, I think, oh, still going. is next week. Or the week after, we're playing Lab 11. That's the last show. Birmingham? Um, is that Birmingham? Birmingham, yeah. yeah. So we had, what was the first one? God, it feels like ages ago now. We had... Was it Leeds? Mint? I think it was Leeds. Mint. Yeah, I think I saw Leeds. Yeah, we had Mint. And then, oh no, it was Liverpool. Done Liverpool. Uh, would have been going mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we done Liverpool. That was good. Um, that was with Circus and Binary. Um, and then Mint. Obviously, you can't go wrong with Mint. It's one of one of mine and Max's favourite clubs. Um, and then I'm pretty sure it was Where Else Project twice, and then Fabric. Touching on your favourite clubs, where is your favourite place to play in the UK? Do you know what? It's an actual easy one for me. Oh. After Cafacile is. Number one, like there's a lot that are close, but topping it after Capsule, like it's just, I think it's just the the one time I've played where just from start to finish, like the energy is just crazy. Is that Venice? Yeah, in Venice. Venice. Yeah. Um, is, is, is is it the actual club itself, the setup, or just the vibe and stuff? It, uh, both. Like the sound system in there is unreal. Like the lights are sick, but like the people will just turn up at whenever it starts. Say it starts three p.m. And the energy will be the same throughout, but like not because it doesn't peak. It will just be going from start to finish. Like they love it, and yeah, I remember coming out of there and was like, that was gaff is mad. Yeah. Is that where you were saying that it was like afternoon and they were saying just shell it because everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Shout out Bruno and Matthew. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was playing a warm up set and they come up and was like, "Me, just send it." And I was like, "I'd, I'd planned this. So. I'd planned this warm up sets just to ease it in." And he was like, "Just go for it." And I was like, "Cool." That's mental. Who was on after you? Um, Frank Storm. Oh, sick. And then after that was Tomem. Oh, it was, just, it was yeah, a sick he's, night. He's a G, Tomem. It was a sick night. Yeah, he was out. He was out here. It was two weeks ago. Yeah, so uh, ago. Yeah, sound guy. Sound yeah, guy. yeah. He's a fucking. I was watching his um, music on set. The other week, oh sorry, last night, and then one of his no art sets and fuck, he just. Who's this, Frank or Toman? Toman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he well, just, they're both sound. But yeah, he, yeah. He just fucking gets it. What What was the event? Was it? They they just so they just do like it's like in house, so it's just like oh, after. Right, that's sick. Don't get me wrong, they do collab. So so, I'm not gonna say too much, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, I get where you're going, but. Yeah, so um, they do collabs with brands. So you've they've done ones with like stuff like Bu, Dungeon Meat, just loads of different cool brands. brands. But they do like an in-house where it's after Capsule, and then they'll Presents. get like their lineup. Yeah. But like they've had anyone you could want to watch. They've goes, had goes like through those doors. anyone will tell you. It's Whereabouts in Italy was it? Venice. Oh, so it's a bit of an institution. But there's a spaceship one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I know what it looks like. Yeah, bulbs? yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, it's like someone's house. In there. Like, like it is a house, <laughs> oh, like, really? a huge house. Oh, oh, right. Like an actual house, and they've converted one of the like, I don't know if it's a living room. Like I didn't ask, <laughs> but it's a house converted into a club. But it's Fuck, that's unreal. Insane. That's insane. It's on like a, li- a little oh, yeah. like a uh, dirt track down on just yeah, the side yeah, road. That's fine. Yeah, another one. Yeah, it looks yeah. mental in there. I that's wouldn't. It. I wouldn't picture like when you say like Italy. I would have thought like Milan or something. Not. Venice. Yeah, mm. but mm. it works hand in hand because, like, 
you party and then the next few days you can just go into Venice and just just chill. Yeah, get it's the, lovely in there. Get a good bit of food. <laughs> the boat. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. what they're called. A gondola. Those boats. I think it's a. Gondola. I have no idea. We won't get the. Food. A gondola is the the ski thing you get down like on the. Chair anyway, there. you got you, it's those little boats that go on the. It's a gondola. <laughs> it's a little rowboat. Anyway, though. anyway, so Europe summer is coming up. UK summer. What's the plans for that? We got coming. What can you spill? What I don't you? know how much I can <laughs> say. So okay, we'll get the exclusive. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. I, I'm absolutely buzzing. Um, Obviously, yeah, I'd, I'm not sure what I can and can't. You've got a busy, we'll, we'll put it this way, you've got a busy summer locked in, a lot of dates. Summer's looking very busy. Mm. Yeah. Can you say where? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Coming to a city near you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing. Um, feeling very grateful. Um, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a going to be a big summer. Busy old that. summer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you play, play much around Europe last year or...? Is so this your first year? Last, I mean, the, I'd say that about the last six <coughs> six months to a year between that is where it's properly started picking up um, in terms of like... so. But in terms of abroad, I've only really played, obviously, like Italy, played Amsterdam a fair few times. Um, where else have I played? Australia. Played in the Alps. Yeah, obviously, I played in <laughs> Australia. Um, played in the Alps. That was cool. But, like, obviously, I feel like... This year, um, this summer, sorry, is now where I'll be travelling a lot sort of out of the UK. And would you say with like the increase of bookings this year and stuff and playing more abroad, a lot of that's to do with the release of In The Lobby? Oh, yeah. Like I, I, I think it's obviously helped. Yeah. Um, obviously you got a lot more music besides that. But yeah, of that course. Was I mean, really yeah, def- the yeah definitely a lot, of, a lot of shows came from that. To be fair, a lot of the ones I'm, I'm doing at the moment we're locked in like before get hard yeah but yeah without a doubt like it's definitely helped me um in terms of that yeah. side of things so what is it like so obviously in europe like summer's peak like anywhere what's it like comparing bookings from summer to winter you're still busy as busy in winter or what's that like i mean i'll be honest i i, I don't actually know because I, when things started getting busy for me was the winter. Yeah. So mm. we're just entering s- summer, really. So I, I don't really know. I feel like it's, it's winter's probably definitely a little bit more Not relaxed sure in terms of, like, not gigging as much because, like, you, you'll still be playing in clubs, but, like, say, festivals, festivals. and stuff, they're not doing them in the winter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably say summer is the more, more hectic. Definitely. What's it like in a UK winter? It's, it's bad in the summer and all. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's rare we get good weather. So, like for example, like the scene here in winter, it's pretty dire. Like everyone's heading off to to Europe, and then you know if you're doing an event in winter, it's it's pretty tough. Mm. Is that the same in the UK? Where in not winter, really. No, it's just it sort of it it dips a bit, but it's it's, it's quite level in terms of like there's there, always, there's stuff going on yeah. all the time. Yeah, he is pretty dire coming out it's in the winter. Clubbing season, really, isn't it? It's like club league versus festivals. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Like people, mm. it don't matter the weather. Like if it's an indoor rave, is he used to the cold anyway? Yeah, and the pretty rain, literally. So. Yeah, and then keeping ground. Like obviously, you're living the high life. You know, traveling, playing all these big gigs. How do you keep yourself grounded in amongst all the chaos of what you're doing? <laughs> I need to find out. And all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's definitely at the minute. It's it's. I've, I've been trying to sort of just. Make sure you get a, enough downtime. Obviously, I'm I'm in the studio quite a lot, so even though it's still working, it's it's not. So I, you just sort of tuck yourself away in the studio, making music, and then you have that heavy weekend of just yeah. traveling shows. Having fun. Um, I think it's just having that balance, really. Obviously, I'm fortunate enough that I don't work, so like as in I just do music full time. Um, but obviously, it might it's for the people that. Do still work nine to five like it's it must, tough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I feel very blessed that I have the the week to sort of be able to have the downtime. Get yourself together, get the music yeah. right and stuff. Do you sort of set yourself a routine and stuff, or you just sort of wing it as you? I mean, it's it's one of them where it's like one month I'll wake up on the first day and be like, right, this month I'm doing this, and then do it, and then next month I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. Can I swear on it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool, yeah. cool, cool. cool. Sure, cool. Australian podcast. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So um, then I'll just be like, oh, I can't be asked. And I'll just sit in bed for like two days just making beats. Um, 
But yeah, obviously got in the studio as well with a lot of cool people recently. Been buzzing with that. So you Ace and Dubs recently in the studio? Yep, got in the studio with him. Mate, we started a, a few decent tracks. I've got a few. few yeah, up. we still need to get them finished. Um, also got him with Valley Love. That was cool. Hey. Cool 48 hours, that was. Um, What's it like getting in the studio with someone as experienced and huge as Ace and Dubs? It, it, it was like... To be fair, like we're we're quite good friends with him, so it was it was just like getting in the studio, like with a mate. Yeah, yeah. obviously, it, it's still Huge. really cool, but yeah. like obviously for us, it was it's just like a a normal day getting in the studio, like. But it, I, we felt privileged to be able to get yeah, him because, yeah. like, when I first come into the scene, like I was listening to him. Yeah, he's like, a he was like one of the first people I was listening to, so yeah, it was, it was cool, but. Made some really good music. Who were the like sort of initial inspirations for you music wise? Like, who were you looking up to over the last few years? So I think the, the main sort of the main three that I would like when I first was like when house music in terms of like I'm known house music, but the sort of scene we're in, I'd say the first like three um, was obviously East End Dubs, Rossi. And uh, Archie Hamilton. It's a good list. Yeah, very yeah. good list. Microhertz release for you. Yeah, yeah, had the Microhertz release. Out. I think that was just the, over a year ago now. Mm. Um, but yeah, so they were like the top three. And obviously to have, like, when I was making music and to have, like, have videos of them playing my tracks. Pretty it was surreal like, feeling. Yeah, you? it was lovely to just see that. Um, I think now, at the minute, my main influence is, I'd say, Garrett David. Was like he out, who was he out here? With Josh touring him? A couple, uh, yeah, yeah. couple months ago. Or I don't know if the tour went ahead or not, but I think, or it might have. <coughs> yeah, just like, just at the minute, like, his stuff is unreal, which a lot of people would probably agree with. But, um, yeah, just the sort of sound I'm going for at the minute is I'm just loving his style that he makes his music. And how would you minute. describe the sound you're going for at the minute? Oh, I wouldn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Just high energy. Yeah. Just something you can move to. Yeah, and that's, and a, that's a good way to put it, really. That's, yeah. why, that's, that's what the dance floor's for. Exactly. Yeah, is the plan, it. have you got many releases in the pipeline or are you like chilling a bit now? What's the plan? Um, I've got a few I've got a few coming up. Well, I say coming up, they're, they're, we're getting them locked in. Um, but I think this year is the more head down studio, just like make, make some music that I'm really happy with. And then next year we just go ham. What's have you got sort of a rough idea of what you want, like a release every month? I I, I don't think I I, I I I reckon this year maybe three or four it, I'll have. Mm. Um, I've got another little thing that I'm gonna be doing. I can't say anything on that, but yeah, around three or four. Yeah, I was um, gonna ask a question, but I feel like it's gonna be answer. It, ask it. Uh, uh, is that like I was gonna say before? Did you have any interest in doing your own label and that kind of thing as well? So, obviously, I, it's never a no. Mm. Right now, probably a no, just because I want to focus more on like my music yeah, and yeah. like. At the end of the day, you're only 21 as well. I think. Yeah. yeah. Probably a lot of people think <laughs> yeah. that you're only fucking a baby, really. Yeah. So I think at the minute I'm just going to focus on like my career in terms of just cracking down on the music, do it all the gigging, and then who knows in the future. But obviously, Max. Max has next up at the minute, so I I'm, I help. Out yeah, a lot that's in that. what I was going to ask you. So um, you're you're involved in any way? With yeah, of course I'm involved. Yeah. It's, it is his brand though, um, but yeah, mm. uh, seeing all the stress that goes goes yeah. on behind the scenes, like especially with you boys, know firsthand. Yeah, I'm not got the patience so, for that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so much I, to it. I could, I couldn't deal with that. So I, for now, I'm just gonna is, take the back seat. Has he got a full team behind him, or is he doing like all the A and R? Oh, yeah, so we've got a full team. Um, obviously, we've got Ross, our manager, um, our agent, Mike. We've got Josh. We're, there, there's so too many people involved. to list. We've, yeah. got, we've got a whole crew just sort of helping out behind the scenes. I suppose you have to, eh, when you're doing proper tours of UK and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it's, it's lovely to have that as well. And obviously, they're like our family. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've got them. So, Ross and Mike are involved in the label itself. Is that what you were saying? I, in terms of what, like, just... So, for for next up, the label, <laughs> is there, like, a whole team that's involved with it? Or is that Max doing yeah, every, that most? Everyone helps out, but yeah. it is, it's Max's, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. And then, so, dream labels for you, have you got any 
Any dream labels that you really want to target? Um, I ha- Well, I'll be honest, the ones that I, I do, it's possible that it might be coming out on them. <laughs> so I don't know if I can even say, um, just because I don't want to give it away. Yeah, so <laughs> making get hard, you're in the lobby. Yes. You were saying that was quite a quick track to make. <laughs> it was. What was it like making that? Do I don't know. It no. was just literally like, as a producer would, you just, I sat down at like, I think it was like, it was a late one. It was like 3 a.m. Just <sighs> sat there. Do. Like, it wasn't even in the studio. It was just in my room, headphones on. And then I just cracked it out. And then st- I obviously sent a few playlists out and it was just sitting like, I think it was just sitting at the bottom of the playlist. It's insane. And, and we, then yeah. Ross and Josh played it at, um, I didn't seek. And, uh, yeah, I just remember, I, I think I was I was with Max somewhere. I think we was in Ibiza. I'm not sure. We were somewhere. And uh, I remember getting, like, my DMs were just flooded with videos. And I was like, what is going on here? And then, obviously, Max was playing it, and Max started singing, you in the love. <laughs> and it just caught on that wildfire. Yeah, and... Honestly, it was, it's more of like, a, I don't actually remember how it sort of happened, but next thing you know, it's just yeah. gone crazy. So when you made that, there was no afterthought of what it could potentially oh, be? Or like that wasn't one that you thought, yeah, this one could be a record that... It was literally just, oh, that that's all right. Put it in the playlist. That's insane. And, um, it's that, that Casio organ's just so catchy. Yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah, you just can't help I it. feel like I've half ruined that sound because now whenever you It's such a popular it, sound. Like, I've gone to use it before, like... Like post making that, and I was like, Yeah, it's hard. Just can't yeah, do it. It's hard. You mm-hmm. can't try it and replicate hard. the success as well. Get hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, yeah. Pretty crazy that such a quick production can have or do so much damage. Like, I think, was it Michael Beebe? Hanging Tree? Tree? Yeah. yeah. Like half an hour or whatever he said. And it's just. You often hear like the qu- like the simple quick tracks are the ones that have so much success, and then people will work on a track for ages and just doesn't. I've had, I've had tracks where I've like been like, Wow, this is the one. And like you send it out and like not Nothing. single download and you're like, oh god. <laughs> Maybe that's the secret. Like I don't produce myself, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, that, is, that might be the just secret. Pop. We might have unlocked. Just yeah, just don't cre- give a fuck. From now, if you've got a loop that you hate, put it in your playlist, <laughs> <laughs> and it'll get. And it'll get well, I'm not on. saying I I don't hate get hard, but I just mean like you didn't think the one that you're not like, oh, this is the mm. it's gonna blow up. Mm. When it when it did start before its official release and it was getting played out heaps and you seen all these videos, did you think it was gonna go to number one? Yeah. No? Because no? I know we all thought it when yeah, like, we yeah. seen videos what, that getting played. But... Leading up to the release. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, like, I, I thought, well, with the hype, I, I did, because it always, it depends on who's releasing, do you know what I mean? Like, um, but I, as any producer's dream is, so you want it to go number one, but I didn't actually go, oh, that's going to go number one. Of it was course. just like, if, if it goes number one, yeah, lovely. it goes. Up. What's that feeling like of hitting number one in like, the beatport charts? It, I'll be honest, I'm not really too, like, Max always, not gets the ump with me, but he's like, because I'm not really too fussed on, like, um, not, like, streams and, like, yeah. number ones. I, I I just make music because I love, like, yeah, literally, love I love making music. Like, if I didn't have mu- making music, I would be lost. So, for me, it's, like, obviously, it's a reward and, like, I'm buzzing. But I'm um, I'm never like overly excited without sounding like ungrateful. Yeah. Like I'm I feel blessed that I was number one. You're just happy to be. But I just the love beat. making music and and just lucky that people like gel with my music. I love yeah. it. Was it always going to be next up that release? Like from day dot? Yeah. Or was it? Yeah. Well, actually, you would have had a couple people. Th- so there's a few surely. things that I can't talk about the, f- some of them because it wasn't even like they're not even out in mm. terms of yeah, but. There was one that swerved it a bit, uh, but then obviously um, Polydor came in and was like, "We're happy to license it through Next Up," and we was like, "And what perfect. a signing it's been!" Yeah. yeah. So, but realistically, it was going to be Next Up, but there was there was one incident where it nearly went swayed. somewhere else. Yeah. And it didn't. I bet but, you they'd um, be wishing they they took that. <laughs> that one. Yeah. But um. But yeah. How how often would you say like you you making a track, do you sort of set yourself a goal, you know, like once you sit down and start making something, you want to pop it out in, in, in a couple of hours, a week? Oh, to be to fair, else. so funny story, obviously with FL, I had the demo version for like a good 
six years. Fucking hell. But with the demo version, you can't save the tracks. As oh. in, you can export <clears throat> them. Right. But if you click out of FL... That's it. It's gone. Fuck. Really? So I got in a habit of, if I started it that day, it gets done within, like, Shit. a few hours. Fuck. But, like, so you can't so know I literally just got in a habit of having to finish tracks, Probably which worked perfect, because now, like... I mean, obviously now it's different because I want to make sure it's like crisp. Yeah, so I, I, it may take you like a few days. Obviously, the odd one is like a few weeks, but it, if, if I'm sitting there for like four weeks on a track, I'm like, oh, yeah, God. it's not the one. Yeah, so the normal it's normally around like a day. So you want to pump them out quick? You know? Yeah, it was like you got a new track on your story every day. Yeah, literally. I was getting stick left, right, and centre. She wanted to go out, <laughs> and uh, shout out, Jazz. <laughs> Big up, Jazz. Shout out. Yeah, she was like, "Oh, can we go out?" And I'm like, "No, just sitting there in the hotel making beats." But yeah, you could say I'm, I'm addicted to it. That's why you got sacked from the steam train. That's why you didn't get invited. Yeah, too yeah. busy in the hotel. <laughs> so have you seen much of Australia? You've been out. Here? You haven't had too much. <laughs> I've seen more of my yeah, laptop sorry. screen. Than, oh, it's bad, honestly, but. Is what it is. I'm definitely coming back, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll have to get, get back. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. definitely be back. So. so this is your first time in Australia, hey? First time. First How time. have you found it? It's lovely. It's, it's nice having the weather. Obviously, actually properly meeting you boys. Yeah. It's the downfall um, of the trip. <laughs> 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 but no, yeah, cannot complain. Do you know what I mean? I'm on the other side of the world doing what I doing love. Doing what you love, yeah. When you put it in that perspective, around it's pretty, good people. It's pretty hard. It's a good show it. tonight. Good show tonight, tonight to yeah, finish off. It's going to be banging. Yeah, I can't wait. What's so? What's and that's what I'm say. End goal. What's the sort of next to three to five years like your goals and ambitions as far as do you have that or are you just kind of taking it as it comes and just working hard. A bit time? of both. Obviously, we're we're setting things like because we don't want to like start slacking. We will, we want to keep things rolling. Um, but yeah, I think at the minute just sort of going with the flow. Um, realistically, everything can change in a heartbeat. Like, of course. Even like with get hard. Like, yeah. I would have set. Where I am now, I'm still, I've just put my foot in the door. But like where I am now, a year ago, I would have wanted to be there in three years. Yeah. So it's just sort of going with the flow and seeing, seeing what happens. Yeah. Have you yeah. got some sort of dream gigs you've got on your list? Yep. I've oh, got uh, pretty much anywhere. Like, <laughs> just wherever will have me. Like at my top three like dream gigs of all time would probably be. We answered this question on the hotline. Uh, oh, did we? No, we said dream yeah. venue this morning. Oh, yeah, 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 dream venue. We said dream, dream venue. venue. Yeah. But if it's number one, mine would probably be Houghton. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, about no, you we, guys? we did say something about that. Uh, yeah. No, I know we did say dream gig. Yeah, I said either like a Noah church or what What did Ooh, I end up going with? That's a shout, you know. What did mm. I end up going with? Um, uh, Amnesia Terrace. Amnesia Terrace. Amnesia Terrace would be fucking good. Yeah. 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 I think I said... Um, Dream gig would be Arcadia at Glastonbury, the big spider looking thing. Oh, yeah. But then this morning I said Amnesia Terrace as well. Yeah, I said Amnesia Warehouse Church Project. The, the, what's the, the concourse? The one that. The, the main room? The big oh, one? Oh, the, the main room. I'm, I'm not too yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever that what, one the, is. The one with like 15. Yeah, yeah. That's chaos in there. Yeah, that'd be. Fun. Print works as well. If it, if it comes back, I'd love you, to play there. Have you been to that uh, drum sheds? The new drum sheds? I've not been. But it looks it, mental. Yeah, so what is it, 15,000 or something? Something crazy like that. Isn't the, the smoking area alone? It's like 3,000 people. It's <laughs> something fucker. It's like Fuck. bigger than anything we've got See, here. So Broadwick, who own Printworks, Drum Sheds, all that, they've just signed an agreement with a mob in New York or something. So uh, they're going to bring really? like a... I'm assuming what's going to happen is they're going to bring like a print work style venue to New York, Miami. Oh, sick. Yeah. We've got Warehouse Project coming out here. Yeah, Have in May. Yeah, May. That'll be cool. Yeah. Who are your favourite, like, up, obviously, like, people at like Aussie Page, who are your favourite up and coming acts at the minute? I've got to shout out the boys. Obviously, I wouldn't, so I, I would say my, what, top five? Yeah, give it. It's got to be Oz, yeah. V's, Lockie, yep. Mad Again. Sorry, I've lost my voice, by the way. <laughs> Francis. There's too many. Danby. Yeah, Danby's fucking Danby's Gigstar, mad. Gigstar. Jamie Aramo. Just all the boys. Oh, 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 we said, we said honestly, five. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, my, I could go on for days, but like, honestly, at the minute, I feel like everyone's just smashing it. It's so, we were discussing, we were just saying this, like, especially in the UK, there's just so many 
good oh, producers here. It's like, just... whereas I feel like people here don't start to they're like, tw- like in mm. their mid twenties to late twenties and stuff. Whereas yeah. it's like you guys are all starting when you're fucking thirty <laughs> years old. It's just like in your culture sort of yeah. thing. And it's in yeah, the blood. It's just, yeah, literally, it's in the blood. It's culture. The, it's Dutch, just... the Dutch boys as well. They all kill it. Mm. Oh, the different breed. There's the crazy. The music that comes from them guys is just so good. Yeah, it is mad. Yeah, like you were just saying that people you don't really. You know a little bit about like electronic music when you're in high school sort of mm. area, but then my first rave would have been, yeah, two years after school, I think, I went to, to a festival. And yeah. that's what I feel like it's pretty common. Like most people don't really get into it. You just go when you're fucking 14 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turning up and out. Did you say your first gig you were it was, quite young? Uh, yeah, I think I was 15 or 16. Fuck. For Deeper Sounds. Shout out Deeper Sounds. Shout out Deeper Sounds. Um, have you been back since? <laughs> Yeah, I, I played from. I, I can't remember the last time I played, but I played from for a fair because Max used to play, Francis used to play, Lucky. So it was All like boys been through there. Yeah, so uh, I think I was I was really young and like first warm up set, <laughs> absolutely bricking it. Yeah, I had to get there like an hour early so I could get in like before Such the security turned up. <laughs> yeah, and then I think there's actually a video of Max stood next to me like. Because I didn't have a clue what I was doing. He was helping you out. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I think it was around 15, 16. Yeah. So wh- when did you really start to, not on the producing end, in the in the gigs end, like really start getting the bigger gigs and, and really making a name for yourself throughout the scene? I reckon last year, like, but sort of like middle to back so end like of last, it was year. Only last year. It's, oh, it's, with gig-wise, it's very fresh, like... Um, yeah, I'd say sort of back end of last year. Yeah, it must be a pretty surreal feeling getting caught up on to like headline all these parties and stuff yeah, it's like crazy. that. it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, wow. And they're always good. Like, it's rare that you, you go to a party and it's... it's there like, to mid, sort of. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, always good at the minute. So have you sort of, since you're 18 and you could legally go into clubs, was it regular gigs as such or...? Um, I wouldn't, I, I'll be honest, I'm not a big partier. Like, um... Obviously, w- w- when I party, you party. Yeah. But um, in terms of like going, <laughs> in, ter- in terms of going out, like I'm, I, I t- I'm quite a homebody. So. Um, you did say you were missing your home cooked meal. Yeah, yeah. Is that true, Jazz? <laughs> yeah, like I, 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 if I could, I would just live in the studio. Yeah. And just, not never leave, but. Um, in terms of party, and it would like I'd have maybe I I was still getting a fair amount of shows, but it would literally just be go to the show and then go. I wouldn't really be partying and such. Yeah, it's easy to stick around and then you have a big one. Yeah, and then the, the next day's a ride off and stuff like that. Is your studio far from your place? It's Max's house. Oh, oh house. <laughs> and so Max lives near you. Uh, about half hour. Yeah. yeah. So um, he's got his he's got his little setup at his so. Is it whatever? Yeah, just on a random one. He'll just. I've got um. Uh, it's not a studio. Like I've got a setup at my house. Just a laptop and stuff. Like, but Max has got a, a good little setup at his. Have you got any tracks in the works with Max? <sighs> we've got. Yeah. Yeah, we've been working. We've been working. To be fair, we've got a lot of old stuff that we made. Like because we, we was gonna do an album. Um. So we're sitting on like a fair amount of tracks together. Um. Especially now that like, like you play back to back quite a lot as well. Yeah, well, yeah. that's that's. It might be a bit harder to catch us back to back soon. Ah, oh, okay. Um, you can make it real exclusive sort of thing. Yeah, so. I think I think we're gonna do something with that. Um, but yeah, it, it, do you know what? It's now trying to find the time because obviously a lot of the time when I'm free, Max isn't free, yeah. and when I, he's free, I'm not free. So it's now just whenever we've got that day or two. You gotta we're both free. We're like, cool, we'll get in the studio. Yeah, yeah what are the yeah. sessions, are they like, are you in a flow state together? Yeah, it, yeah. It, like, it will just be, you get in and we don't leave for about four days. Just like, lock in. Yeah, just, we don't even eat. It's just sitting glued to the chair. And Max sings as well, we hear. He does. <laughs> he does. Not a lot of people knew that. I did. Um, but, yeah, so I think his first one was In You. So he sung on In You. If people don't That's know. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't think anyone over here knows that. I, I did not believe it. I couldn't believe it. I literally said to him, like, that's not you, and he had to pull the project out. But did he just say, I'm, right, I'm going to fucking sing? Did he always no, he, just, he kept it quiet. Like, he, he'd done the track, and then 
I was like, where'd you get that vocal from? Like, it's quite cool. And he was like, oh, I've done it. It's me. <laughs> up his tyres. Yeah, so now we'll just be in the studio, blanket over his head, <laughs> voice memo. Like, we've recorded it all on the phone. Oh, really? Yeah, we've got a microphone, but Sometimes for some reason, his voice just sounds sick in the thing. Just goes so, yeah. to show you, like, a cheap bit of a... Well, not, che- not the phones are cheap, <laughs> but compared no, to like, but using like, an actual yeah, microphone, yeah, yeah. it just goes to show you, you don't need the bees needs equipment yeah. to Do make something. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I could barely talk right now. <laughs> uh, singing, yes, yeah, I'll leave that to Max. Yeah, you and me both. All right, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Hanging out with you over the tour. We'll have a good one tonight. So, yeah. Let's go. Hey. Thank you.